Hi, and welcome to lesson 2A in our electrons unit. Here we're going to talk about light calculations. Remember that the presence of a letter after a number in our lesson system means that this is very much an honors only lesson. This is something that you really only need to understand at the honors chemistry level and above that, the college level, the AP level, those sorts of things. So let's go back and look at this notion of how light is produced. We learned in our first discussion on light that light was produced from the transition of electrons from the excited state back to the ground state. Electrons will absorb quantized amounts of energy, move into the excited state, and then transition back to the ground state very quickly, releasing particular photons of light. So electromagnetic radiation is made of photons and photons travel incredibly fast. The speed of a photon in a vacuum is 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. This is a constant. It's defined as C, and it is given to you on your honors reference tables. It's the speed of light in a vacuum, something you've probably seen before at different places in your life. Remember from our discussion of atomic models that photons can be thought of as both particles and waves. Let's focus on the properties of the wave. We're really interested in three major properties of waves when we consider photons. We're interested in their wavelength, we're interested in their frequency, and we're interested in their energy. Wavelength is defined as the distance from one point on a wave to the same point on the next wave. Electromagnetic waves have a huge variety of wavelengths. Radio waves can have wavelengths that are many thousands of meters long, and things like gamma rays have wavelengths that are trillionths of a meter long. So we go from the incredibly tiny wavelengths up to the incredibly large wavelengths. If you remember, visible light have wavelengths that are on the order of hundreds of nanometers in length, or 10 to the negative seven meters. Frequency is defined as the number of wavelengths that pass a point in space per second. And again, we see a huge diversity in electromagnetic waves. So radio waves have a frequency of 10 to the four hertz. What this means is that roughly 10,000 radio wavelengths will pass a particular point in space every second. Something like gamma rays have a wavelength of 10 to the 20 hertz, which is a huge, huge, huge number of wavelengths that pass a particular point in space every second. When we're considering the mathematical relationships that matter in electromagnetic radiation, we're really interested in the relationships between wavelength, frequency, energy, and speed. Specifically, as wavelength increases, frequency decreases and vice versa. This is the classic inverse relationship. But as frequency increases, the energy that the wave brings with it also increases. This is the classic direct relationship. And of course, the speed of any wavelength of light is constant in the medium in which it's suspended. So in a vacuum, which is really the only thing we care about for our purposes, that speed is always going to be approximately 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second, an incredibly large number. The mathematical relationship between wavelength and frequency for electromagnetic radiation can be stated as follows. The formula is given to you on your honors reference table. The product of the frequency times the wavelength is always going to equal the constant value of the speed of light. Using this, we can analyze the frequency and the wavelength of any particular photon of light if we really want to. Let's try a problem that does this. This is in our unit five packet on page 10. The frequency of the radio waves emitted by the WPDH radio tower is 101.5 megahertz. So mega means a million of the base unit, so a million hertz. And so if we want to put this into scientific notation, this would be 1.015 times 10 to the eighth hertz. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, I would encourage you to go back and take a look at our scientific notation discussion and our metric system discussions. What is the wavelength of those radio waves? Pause the video and see if you can do this on your own. And then when you're ready, let's go through it together and talk about how we solve it. In order to do this, we're going to use the relationship that we just discussed. The frequency times the wavelength is going to equal the speed of light. Rearranging this for wavelength, we're going to find that the wavelength is going to be equal to the speed of light divided by its frequency, and then substituting in our values and solving, we'll get a final answer of 2.96 meters. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, take a moment and write down any questions that you have before we move on. When considering the relationship between frequency and energy of a particular wavelength of light, we know that that is directly proportional. And the formula that describes that relationship is that the energy is equal to the frequency times Planck's constant. Planck's constant, symbolized as H, is a constant value named after Max Planck, who discovered that this affected the quantized amount of energy that particular wavelengths of light could produce. And so after a result, had it named after him. 
Planck's constant is defined as 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative 34 joules per hertz, so an incredibly, incredibly tiny value. And this formula and Planck's constant are both given to you on your honors reference tables. Let's go in and look at a problem that uses this formula and see how that works. So this is also from page 10 of your unit five packet. And the question is, what is the energy of a photon of red light with a frequency of 4.70 times 10 to the 14 hertz? Pause the video, take a moment and solve it on your own. And then when you're ready, let's go through and look at it together. So in order to do this, we're going to use the formula that we just discussed. E is equal to H times F. We're going to substitute in our values for H, which of course is constant, and F, which is given to us in the problem. We're going to do that math. We're going to get 31 times 10 to the negative 20 joules. And if we want to put that into scientific notation, that becomes 3.1 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, take a moment, write down any questions that you have, and then when you're ready, we can move on. Thanks so much for watching this video on light calculations. Please make sure that you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure that you can explain the relationship between wavelength and frequency of any photon of electromagnetic radiation. Also make sure that you can explain the relationship between energy and frequency of any photon of electromagnetic radiation. And finally, make sure that you can use the equations that we've discussed in this presentation to solve for any of the variables and relate them to the overall electromagnetic spectrum. For instance, if you figure out the wavelength of a particular photon, can you tell me where in the electromagnetic spectrum it falls if I give you the electromagnetic spectrum? If you can do these things, you're doing great. If not, that's okay too. Take a moment and write down any questions that you have. You can always leave them in the comments below the video or get in touch with me through the information in the info field. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.